Hey everyone, this is Paul from Morthway with Valpal. I'm here with my friend Al. I've known Al for a long time. He's a, he likes to bowl, he likes to golf, and he has a shoulder problem. A couple years ago, had rotator cuff repair, but was not able to have a complete repair because uh, the, the tear was so massive. Uh, Al's gonna be turning 80 pretty soon. He likes to stay active. He just you know did a three mile bike uh, before coming in this morning and wants to continue to be active. So it's probably going to be requiring a reverse total shoulder replacement, but I wanted to demonstrate what a massive rotator cuff tear looks like. and. Just just talk about some of the special tests that we use to identify that. So one thing that we need to look at is his active range of motion. So Al, I'm gonna have you try to lift your arm straight up as high as you can go, all right, and back down, and now out to the side. And notice what happens here, okay, how that humeral head goes up, now back down. Now, there are a couple things that can cause this. A rotator cuff tear can cause this. A C5 nerve root compression in the neck can cause this. And a frozen shoulder could cause this also. So in order to rule out the frozen shoulder, what we're going to do is we're going to just take him through motion passively. So if I can do it and he can't, that means that he has you know, good shoulder range of motion. He's not bound down by any tightnesses in the joint. He does have a little bit of arthritis also, um, but uh, not a very noisy joint, okay? As far as identifying a C5, deep tendon reflexes, sensory testing uh, can help rule that out, and we've already done that, so he doesn't have any signs of that. So the first test I want to show you is what we call an empty can test to identify if he has what we call a supraspinatus tear. So we're going to take this hand, we're going to turn the thumb down like this, and we're going to ask him to hold that arm there, and he can't, okay? So that identifies that his supraspinatus is torn. We're going to take him over here, and we're going to have, ask him to give us some resistance here. I want you to hold tight. Don't let me push your hand in toward your belly, and he can't resist me there either. Signs of an infraspinatus tear. Next test we're going to do is the simple shrug sign. So as he tries to lift the arm out to the side, we're going to see what happens here. So go ahead and try to lift again. And we notice the humeral head starts to climb up and rest. What happens here is the rotator cuff is meant to push that humeral head down and keep it down there. So relax your arm so that it stays down just like that. But as soon as he tries to contract his deltoids, pull the humeral head up, and it starts to come upward and it doesn't stay in a good position. So he loses that ability to lift that arm. The next one would be the external rotation lag sign. So if I take him here, I want you to relax that arm completely. All right, and what we're gonna do is we're just, we're not gonna bring him all the way to external rotation because he has a little capsule tightness there. We're gonna drop him just a little bit before that. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let go of his hand and I'm gonna, ask him to hold that arm in that position. And we can't do that either. All right, so a uh, very good sign he has a complete supraspinatus tear, infraspinatus tear, um, and as far as his subscapularis, we're gonna test him right now. So hold that arm right there. Don't let me pull it away from your belly. And, and he, he gives a little bit. So we're suspicious he has some subscapularis tearing also. Now. Al's a very strong guy. He's exercised all of his life. I think up until he was 65, he was benching like 300 pounds or something like that. So always been very strong. So I should not be able to really break that internal rotation. So uh, I, I'm suspicious he has a tear of all three of those. Very hard to distinguish the teres minor alone because it's a small muscle group could possibly be involved there also. So what we're gonna do with Al is, we know he's going to have a reverse total shoulder replacement because of the massive cuff tear. We're gonna put him on an exercise program and um, if you check out the link above, we're gonna show you all of the exercises that we're going to be doing for if you want to avoid surgery and just try to go without. Or if you know you're gonna have a total shoulder replacement or reverse total shoulder replacement, these would be good exercises to perform. So hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Thanks.